All right, I think this may be the last video I make um, looking at the views on the YouTube channel. There's not many at all. So I'm spending a lot of time making videos that I don't think are going to be making any headway towards improving grades or getting us any progress. So I think this is going to be it. So I'm going to make one big video on the gas laws and put it up there and see how it goes. There are four primary gas laws, and the four primary gas laws relate the four major ways that we, um, the variables from the four major ways that we measure gases to one another. If you recall, those are volume, pressure, temperature, and amount. Those are the four primary ways that we measure gases, the four main ways we do. And what the primary gas laws do is they take two of these four variables and they examine the relationship between them, how they're related, how changing one of those variables would change the other. The four primary gas laws are Boyle's, Charles, Gay-Lussac's, and Avogadro's. Boyle's Law examines the relationship between pressure and volume. Charles Law examines the relationship between temperature and volume. Okay, Lussac's law examines the relationship between temperature and pressure, while Avogadro's law examines the relationship between volume and amount. Now, the relationship between the two variables that each of the laws examines are either going to be directly proportional or inversely proportional. Directly proportional means that the two variables will undergo the same change. In other words, when one of the variables goes up, the other variable will go up. Inversely proportional means they undergo the opposite change. When one of the variables goes up, the other variable goes down. The way these four gas laws work out is that for Boyle's law, it's inversely proportional. Pressure and volume are inversely proportional. For all the rest of the laws, they're directly proportional. This allows us to make some predictions in as far as behavior of gases are concerned. So let's say I have a sample of a gas and I double the volume of that gas, and I want to know what happens to pressure. Well, I know it's inversely proportional. If the, volume, if the amount and temperature are constant, doubling the volume of the gas should cut the pressure in half. Inversely proportional means they have the opposite change. If I have a gas and I double the temperature, and I want to know what's going to happen to the pressure. Provided the volume and amount are constant, if I were to double the temperature of a gas, I would double its pressure because they are directly proportional. They change in the same way. Again, inversely proportional means they change in the opposite way. When pressure goes up, volume goes down. If volume goes up, pressure goes down. They change in the opposite way. If I double the volume, I'd half the pressure. 
If I half the pressure, I double the volume. They change in the opposite way. Four times the volume, a quarter of the pressure. Seven times the pressure, one-seventh the volume. They change in the opposite way. Inverse. Seven times bigger, one over seven smaller. Twelve times smaller, one over twelve. Twelve times bigger. And again, directly proportional, same way. Three times the amount, three times the volume. One-sixth the volume, one-sixth the temperature. In all of these laws, whichever variables are not covered by the law have to be constants. So since Avogadro's law is volume and amount, the other two variables that we have to deal with, temperature and pressure, have to be constant. Charles' law deals with temperature and volume. The other two variables, pressure and amount, have to stay constant. So for all these laws, for them to work, the other two variables have to be constant. They all have equations associated with them. And the way that equation looks depends upon the relationship that we're dealing with. Whenever you have a directly proportional relationship, the relationship is expressed as division. So whenever you have a directly proportional relationship, the equation will be division. Whenever you have an inversely proportional relationship, it's the opposite, and the equation will show multiplication. Each equation deals with before and after scenarios. So while Boyle's law is about pressure and volume, with the way the equation sets up, you end up with pressure and volume on both sides. Starting pressure and starting volume on one side, ending pressure and ending volume on the other. It's the inversely proportional one, so it's all about the multiplication. P1 times V1, the starting pressure times the starting volume, equals P2 times V2, the ending pressure times the ending volume. Charles' law is about temperature and volume. So we're going to have a T1 and a V1 on the left side and a T2 and a V2 on the right side. But this time, since the law is directly proportional, it's all about division. So the way we set it up, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Okay, Lussac's law is about temperature and pressure. Again, it's directly proportional, so it's all about division. We're going to have a temperature and pressure on both sides, and we set it up very similar to Charles' law, but instead of P, V's on top, we have P's on top. Like in division, because of that directly proportional relationship. And then finally, Avogadro's. Volume and amount. Amount is abbreviated with N for number of moles. Again, a V and an N on one side, a V and an N on the other, starting on this side, ending on that side. So that's what the equations look like. Now, mathematically, working problems with Boyle's Law, it's kind of important that you're, you're in a routine, you're in a pattern. I mean, it should be easier than stoichiometry because it's all single variable algebra stuff. But what really worries me a lot are these variables in the denominators. If you had to do a Charles Law problem where you had to solve for the final or the initial temperatures, a very common mistake is failing to move the variable out of the denominator and solving for the inverse. Not a good thing. Same thing with, with Gay-Lussac's Law. I worry about those T's on the bottom. And if you have to solve for the initial temperature or the final temperature, I worry that you're going to solve for the inverse of the temperature. Down here it's a mouth. I worry about you solving for the inverse of amount. So what I suggest to do when you have a reference sheet and it has these equations on it, I suggest you take these three gas laws and you cross multiply them out and make them look like Boyle's law. So V1 times T2 equals V2 times T1. 
Now there's no variable in the denominator. Now you can't make that mistake. P1 times T2 equals P2 times T1. Again, now there's no variable in the denominator anymore, so you can't make that mistake. B1 times N1, or N2, equals B2 times N1. Again, variable out of the denominator now, and you can't make a mistake. Questions look like this. Gas has a temperature of 350 Kelvin. As I mentioned in a prior video, Kelvin is the unit we have to have for gas laws. No negative numbers in there, so everything works out like they're supposed to. So gas has a temperature of 350 Kelvin, and the pressure of 3.6 atmospheres. can be any unit for pressure. You can use millimeters mercury, tor, any of them. I just picked atmosphere because I like it. So a gas has a temperature of 350 Kelvin and a pressure of 3.6 atmospheres. So the gas is compressed. To 9.8 atmospheres. What will the temperature be? Well, the first step in solving a problem like this is figuring out what it is we have to work with. And sometimes there's context clues like a temperature of 350 Kelvin. Now I know that's a temperature. Pressure of 3.6 atmospheres. I know that's a pressure. What about that one? Doesn't say pressure, doesn't say temperature. What is it? Well, the answer is right there. Atmospheres. That's a unit of pressure, so we know we have a second pressure in this one. What we're missing is temperature. The second temperature. We want to find out what that's going to be. Well, what will the temperature be? Now, there's got to be ones and twos assigned to this. And there's some context clues that you have to look for in order to figure that out. One of the biggest ones, one of the most often overlooked ones, is the word to. I mean, how many times a day do you use that word? Have you ever really thought about what it means? Well, the word to, T-O, means where are you going? Think about using it in everyday life. I'm going to the gym. What does that mean? That means you're going to end at the gym. That's where you're going to end up. I'm going to my mom's house. Again, what does that mean? I'm going to end up at my mom's house. Two is where you're going to end, and this question tells us we're going to 9.8 atmospheres. That's where we're going to end. That's the number two, which means this has to be number one. That must be P1. Now, as far as this temperature is concerned, figuring that one out, there's the word and. And again, how many times a day do we use the word and? Think about what it means. And means things are joined together. Husband and wife, they're joined together, they're a couple. And means things are joined together. 350 Kelvin and 3.6 atmospheres. These two numbers are joined together. And since this one is a one, this one also has to be a one. That's how they're joined. They're both the starting ones. Now sometimes there will be other context clues like the word initial or original. That means starting. That means one. Or it'll say final or ending. That's two. So look for those as well. Now we have four equations to choose from to solve this problem. Picking the right one is a matter of doing this listing things out. I see I have two T's and two P's. Well, there's only one equation. 
with two T's and two P's in it is a Gay-Lussac's law problem. And again, maybe I don't want to use that. This might be the better one to use. P1 times T2 equals P2 times T1. Let's see how this works out. I substitute. So my P1 is 3.6 atmospheres. My T2, that's my variable. If that's T1, then I'm looking for T2. Equals P2, that's the 9.8, times T1, 350. Now, if you do that cross-multiplying things, all your primary gas law problems end up looking the same way. One side of your equation has both numbers on it. The other one only has one. You'll solve them the same way. You'll multiply those two numbers together. 9.8 times 350. That's 3,430. And we multiplied the atmospheres in the Kelvin, so it would be ATM times K. That's what we did to them. We multiplied them. Nothing happened to this side. Now we're ready to solve. Since we're multiplying by 3.6, we'll divide both sides by 3.6. Here the atmospheres cancel. So T2 is some number in Kelvin. That's the only unit left. We take 3,430 divided by 3.6, and we would get 953. Now, I'm not doing significant figures with this. I don't do significant figures with this because it's enough for you to learn and keep track of as it is. We can look at these numbers and get an idea if we did it right because way up here, we said Gay-Lussac's law says temperature and pressure are directly proportional. I increased the pressure. It went from 3.6 to 9.8. I increased the pressure so I should see an increase in temperature. 350 to 953. It went up. This is almost a three times increase. So we should see almost a three times increase here, and we do. We know we did this right. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to think about it anymore when we turn a problem like that in. We'd be done with it. As long as you do this cross-multiplying thing, the math for all four gas laws is the same. You go through, you figure out what variables you have, you find the equation that matches those variables, and every time with the cross-multiplication, one of your side will have two numbers on it. You'll go ahead and simplify and multiply that side out. The other side will only have one number on it. Divide by that one number and you'll have your answer. Very uniform way to approach it. Uh, that's why I like doing it that way. Now, we haven't got to this yet, but I'm, like I said, I'm making one big video. We have the ideal gas law. Scientists saw all these four uh, gas laws and thought, wouldn't it be wonderful if we had one equation that did it all? And so what they did is they tried to come up with that one equation that did it all. And what they came up with is this. PV equals NRT. P is pressure. V is volume. N is amount. R we haven't seen before. That's something new. R is something called the ideal gas constant. And T is temperature. That ideal gas constant attempts to take all the relationships from those four primary gas laws and combine them into a single number. For us, in the way that we're doing this in class, the number that we're going to use for R is going to be, as soon as I look it back up on my paper here, 0 0.0821 liters atmosphere 
per mole degree Kelvin. It's got all four units in it. Crazy, isn't it? Got all four units in it. And again, that's because it's attempting to give us the relationship for all four variables in one number. Well, here's the thing. If you're trying to put the relationship for all four variables in one number, it ain't gonna work well. And it doesn't. The ideal gas law doesn't mean it's the ideal law. It means you need the ideal gas. You really need the perfect gas for this law to work right. And what is the perfect gas? Well, an ideal gas has a temperature of 273 Kelvin and a pressure of one atmosphere. STP, standard temperature and pressure. The gas has to be at STP for the law to work. If you wander too far away from STP, then the predictions aren't very good. The further away from STP you go, the worse the predictions get. So really, the only thing you can play around with in this is volume and amount. And if you're going to play around with volume and amount, you might as well use Avogadro's law in the first place, because that one really works. So it's, it's not a great law. It's not a good law. It's a law for the perfect gas. And if you have a perfect gas, it works OK. Now, because of this mess over here, pressure has to match this unit, so it has to be in atmospheres. And volume has to match that unit. It has to be in liters. And amount has to be in moles. And temperature has to be in Kelvin, like it usually does for a gas law. Now, if all those things are perfect and all your stars align, you can solve a problem like this. A gas has a pressure, let's not wander too far, of 1.3 atmospheres, a volume of, I don't know, how about 30.5 liters, and a temperature. Let's not wander too far. 300 Kelvin. What is the amount? We're going to try to find moles in this one. So atmospheres is pressure. Volume is V, that's 30.5 liters. Kelvin is temperature. We're looking for amount. Ideal gas constants, ideal gas constant. That never changes. Well, it changes. If I weren't using liters, it wouldn't be the same number. If I weren't using um, atmospheres, it wouldn't be the same number. It would change. That's all we need, so we can solve for N. Again, PV equals N, R, T. Pressure is 1.3. Volume is 30.5. N is what we're looking for. 0 0.0821 for our R, our R. And our temperature is 300. First thing we're going to do in this is some simplification. I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two numbers together. And that's 39.65. I'm going to go ahead and multiply those two numbers together. And that is 24.63. Now I'm ready to solve. Divide both sides by the 24.63. Now, I did not put my units in here, mostly because of time. The video is almost a half hour long already. We don't need to cancel the units. We know that our amount has to match whatever our amount unit was in R, and that's moles. That's it. We're done.
There is one more law we have to do, and that's Graham's Law of Effusion. And unfortunately, it's probably the most confusing one. And again, because I've already just gone over 25 minutes on this video, and because maybe two people are going to watch it, I'm not going to take it to 35, 40 minutes. We're going to end it right there. I've almost used up a planning period doing this now. Again, probably the last video. I, I don't see enough people watching it to justify spending you know, an hour a day making videos and getting them uploaded and stuff like that. So uh, you can search YouTube for other stuff for this point out. Good luck.